When we came out here in these boonies, mm -hmm. we didn't have any idea what we could do from oh, here. Oh, it's beautiful. Right. It's gorgeous, gorgeous out here. Gorgeous, and it's anointed. And it's it has open you heavens. You can sense the presence of God. It has open heavens. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Father. We're just thankful for that and thankful for this opportunity <laughs> to be on uh, television, to be on a, a video uh, venue that we can reach you and be with you today from where we are out here. And with me are uh, Candace and Chip Brim, uh, my son and his wife, and they pastor a glorious church fellowship in Collinsville, Oklahoma. Which is your church? Yeah, we the it, ministry. Yeah, church. we began this. This is it's the hub of all of our ministry, and uh, we began that church. It's twenty miles from Tulsa, north, north, and we began that. I don't know, Chip, nineteen seventy something. In one of our bedrooms. <laughs> <laughs> with the shoebox. But anyway, <laughs> praise God. He's he's really helped us because it's all about people, and he's helped us reach you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, Chip, Great he's God. given Chip a wonderful message because he wants to reach you. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, her heart, Candace's heart is the body of Christ. She's a prayer. She's a pastor and a wonderful teacher. Mm -hmm. But she really has a heart for the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So these messages that God has been giving them right. are messages for the body of Christ to come mm -hmm. up, come. to be mm -hmm. uh, promoted yes. mm -hmm. to another level. Because yes. it's time. Yes. yes. And we're living in a time. Oh, my goodness. Where the darkness is so gross and, and like you know, the it covers said. the people. Yeah, yeah. And it's covering the earth. They don't know any better. No. Right. So why get mad at them? Why get upset at them? Right. They don't know any better. No. Right. No. But we need to shine. We need That's to. It. We, That's we're, it. That's we're, it. We're commanded to arise and shine, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. for the light is come and the glory of the Lord has been risen and seen upon us. I hear. You know, I'm a, a basketball fan. Yeah. And so I hear uh, the coaches say, "We can't do anything about them." I'm also a football fan. We can only do something about us. Mm -hmm. We're not going to worry about them. No. We got to do something about us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So right. we've got to do something about us That's because right. we're made by God for the eternal purpose. Right. The purpose of the ages, before there ever was an age in the Bible, is that there would be a people on the earth that right. would manifest God to the principalities and powers. Right. That's us. We can't do it on a low level. No. The no. devils will laugh at us. They'll say they're manifesting God. <laughs> You're right. That'd yeah. be like the giant laughing at David. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we, we've got to manifest God. Mm -hmm. And right. I can promise you, God's doing His part. Never oh. fails. Never fails. Definitely. And so we've been talking about this and um, all in, and and it's time that mm -hmm. the commitment be made. And as a coach, I know that no championship that we have won. Uh, ever came without this commitment from everybody on the team. Hmm. Well, I know that the church is going to become the glorious church. Right. This commitment has to happen. It has right. to and, happen. And we really feel it's like written. It, God it, can't it be is wrong. written, mm -mm. and we're going to do it. Right. And it is an right. all-in commitment. And right. if you look all throughout the Bible, all-in was all throughout there. Mm -hmm. David, Abraham, you just go on and on and on and on. And and an all-in, you think about uh, you think about Elijah burning his plowing equipment. Mm -hmm. Can't even go back to being a farmer. Mm -hmm. That's called all in. Well, tell that right. story. No, not yet. Not yet. That's no. coming later. <laughs> you got to come but, back but next I, week. Sorry, you got to stay tuned. Now. <laughs> but he, we've been talking about how God will will test you. He won't tempt you, mm -mm. but He will test your mm -hmm. faith. As a matter of fact, He promises to provide an escape route right. for every tempting situation. But. I can promise you this, he'll test your faith, but it is to promote you. Right. And I think this is being, uh, ha you know, uh, is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, the thing about it was, was the Jews believed that Abraham was tested by God 10 times and Isaac was the final exam and he passed the test. Right. And Isaac was a gift from God. Yes, he was. So it wasn't he was trying to take the gift. He's mm -mm. not a re-gifter. No. No. He's no. the gift giver. Right. But whenever the gift becomes bigger than the gift giver, right. then there's a problem. There's a problem. Mm -hmm. and, and so the question that God was showing me in this is, what, how do, what do you find your identity in and what do you find your security in? Because mm -hmm. that's your Isaac. Right. And it's time to identify our Isaacs. 
Right. And God will test you to to make sure, or or to because He wants your identity and your security to be in Christ or to be right. in Him. And God will go after anything you put your trust in more. He just will. That's that's the kind of God He is. But you don't have to live in fear of the fact that God is going to take away mm-hmm. gifts from you. That's the most important thing to you. Right? right. So, but but we understand if the gift ever becomes bigger than the gift giver, then the very now watch this. I, I wrote this down. The very thing God gave you to serve His purpose is undermining His plan for your life, right. and we it's don't true. want that to happen. It's true. But that can happen. Right. But God-given gifts are wonderful things, but they can become dangerous things as well. Mm-hmm. And you know, so. If you cultivate the gifts that God gives you and you begin to rely on those gifts instead of relying on God, mm-hmm. that's the problem. The problem. Mm-hmm. So you Huge think problem. about Lucifer. You remember that mm-hmm. story? It was God who gave Lucifer these gifts. Mm-hmm. A beautiful form, a beautiful voice. Right. But what happened? He Music. started he started looking in the mirror of that <laughs> and he started looking at his gift and okay. pride set mm-hmm. in and he started glorifying the gift Mm-hmm. Instead of the okay. gift giver. Mm-hmm. And the here's what I, I learned the lesson of Lucifer is this. Whatever you don't turn into praise turns into pride. Yes. You should be it's praising so God and thanking so God yeah. for the gifts that he's given you. Right. And they're not bigger than God. Right. right. Your children, your family, your, your, your church, your ministry, right. Right. not bigger than God. Mm. It's good. And, you know, it's I had good. gifts from God that... That he gives you the desires of your heart. And so I had to go to the altar with these things. And I remember when I first, when God said, are you seeking me? I went to the altar and I said, the two, the two things I loved were sports. Of course, I was into coaching. Any kind of sports, I loved it. And hunting, I loved to hunt. And I took him to God and for two years, I didn't say two years. I said, Lord, I'm not doing it anymore. Mm-hmm. I went two years not doing it and I put it on the altar. And then, Mom, there's a story that involves you. <laughs> this happened. So I put it. I'm not watching any sports. I'm not going to any sports. And then Mom and I were doing a meeting out in Oakland, California. Remember that meeting with mm-hmm. Brenda and Mark Thomas? Mm-hmm. And uh, so we go there, and it was the year that the, the Rams were, won the Super Bowl with Kurt Warner and Isaac Bruce and a lot of Christians, of a, and they went to a church in St. Louis that you would often go to. Yeah, and Isaac Bruce was raised up in a church in Florida that we knew his mother. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so mom, you know, they were friends, and, and there was uh, relationships. And so we're doing this week-long meeting. I had already preached. The pilot comes to me and says, Chip, did you know that the Rams are in town playing the 49ers, the San Francisco 49ers? And I said, yeah, but I'm thinking I put that on the altar and that's, you know, but mom, your mom knows these guys and know, you know, a few of them. And and, and I go, are you asking me to ask her if we can go? And he says, well, you never know. And so I called mom in her room. I said, mom. Kurt Warner, Isaac Bruce. Oh, I love those guys. I love the mama. You know, the whole story, how you tell. <laughs> yeah, they're in town. Oh, okay. And you're like, are you asking me if I, you can go? <laughs> you said, we're having meetings. I go, I know we're having meetings. I'm not trying to. And I really, in my heart, didn't want to. I had given that up. And she goes, let me pray about it. So I don't know how long it was, an hour or so later, mom calls the room. She goes, Chip, I prayed about it. <laughs> and you... And the pilot are to go, and I am to give you $50 a piece. <laughs> and I thought, okay, well, that's great, 50 bucks. I mean, you know, that'll buy a foam finger and some popcorn or something. I'm sure the ticket might be more than that, and why did God, you know, maybe he just wants us to cut. I don't know. <laughs> but $50. I, okay, Ma, hey, we get to go, so we're yeah. excited. And we go to that meeting that night, and the pastor of the church, who's a huge sports fan, said, I'll go with you. And we're like, you can't. You're running these meetings. <laughs> what have we done? And so he goes, let me go ask my wife. He comes back and he goes, I can't go. And we're like, we know. So he comes back and he says, this is the way it's going to be. You're going to have to buy tickets before you go. And he shows us where you go buy them from scalpers or whatever. Which it was legal. And he says, you're going to pay $120. You're going to, you're going to sit in the nosebleed behind the goalpost way up in the very top section. 
And he goes, chip it, sells out, buy those tickets as quick as you can because it's going to be sold out. Oh, how much? 120 bucks. Oh, okay. Well, mom gave us $50 a piece. <clears throat> so we go. And uh, the, the, the uh, guy who was with me, the pilot, didn't know anything about sports. He, he doesn't listen to all that. And he just goes to the ticket booth where nobody is. There's no lines there because they've been sold out every game. There's no tickets. And he's talking to somebody in this ticket booth hole, which you can't see them. I've got a guy lined up, and he said exactly what the pastor told me, $120. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay, John, you know, and I'm, I'm looking for him. So finally, and he's there, and he goes, Chip, Chip, Chip. And I go, <sighs> so I ran down there, and he goes, I found tickets. And I go, you found tickets? <laughs> yeah, they're selling tickets. They got two tickets left. And I look down in the hole, and I don't see anybody in that hole. <laughs> and and they and I said, you got two tickets? And they scooted out a map of the stadium out of the hole. <laughs> and I said, yeah, but where are these tickets? And they pointed, and it was the 50-yard line, about 10 rows up. You can't get any better tickets no. than where no. this finger pointed out of the black hole. <laughs> and then I said, yeah, but how much are they? Because this is primo. This is the best. It's Nobody will have better than this. And it, this voice said $50 a piece. <laughs> we went whack, whack. Two $50 bills went down there that mom gave us as quick as we could go. And we walked in there, and we had plenty of money for foam fingers and popcorn. <laughs> And you talk about we go in there and we're sitting in the best seats at a game to watch these guys. And God started talking to me about what I, he said, this is a gift from me. Mm -hmm. And you didn't let that gift get bigger mm -hmm. than the giver. Right. And I'm blessing you. Right. I know the desires of your heart. Right. I could have never made that happen. But God did uh -huh. mm -hmm. because I didn't make it bigger than him. Right. Is right. there an Isaac mm -hmm. that you can take to the altar that maybe has gotten bigger? Maybe it's time or a job or maybe it's whatever it could be. Mm -hmm. But is there an Isaac that's your security? That's where your security is in right. instead of your trust in him. Mm. That is what an Isaac is. Mm -hmm. And so the other one was hunting. Well, mom, we do we do vision cards. And on the vision cards, um, Keith Morris taught us how to do it. First this. of the year. And and, yes. and we do we year. do it based on Habakkuk 2 2. Write it down. And and we write down what we can do for God, just mm -hmm. what we can do in our march. What you, know? you can do more than you more, can. what we can do more for him. And then the mm -hmm. two, the, the second column is God's responsibility, our needs, and then the third one is our desires. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the desires I always put down would be would be to uh, have a, a, a hunt, maybe a, a, guided, um, hunt. a guided hunt mm -hmm. that was paid for to where they knew where they were at. So I didn't have to take much time. I traveled all the time. And um, so I couldn't have possibly put down what God did for me. And so I had given that to God. And that, that's not going to be bigger than God. I love it. But it's not going to be. You're not even going to put hunt down on your. Desire. I did on my desires. I'd put down like a guided like a, hunt. Yeah, yeah. Guided but that's hunt. all I knew that I could put down. Yeah. So I'm in South Texas, and I'm at a buddy's church down there, and uh, he he has a friend who moves, and he's looking for a place to buy, and this place is where all of these ranches are, these high fenced ranches or hunting and ranches. hunting ranches, mm -hmm. and and he's not a hunter. This guy. And he comes in and he buys this and he hears me preach. And he says, and so he calls his pastor friend. And he says, can I get Chip's number? I got to call him. <clears throat> Do you think he'd mind if I call him? And I said, no. He, he said, no. So he calls me. Hey, this is so-and-so. He goes, Chip, listen, I'm burning up with this, but God has told me to move back and buy this hunting ranch, and my father-in-law wants to run it, fill the feeders, do all of this, take the pictures, all the camera, and, and he goes, and, and I don't even hunt. He goes, I don't hunt. And I, he goes, I feel like I'm supposed to get an extra set of keys, and you're supposed to act like you own this ranch, and we're going to run it for you. <laughs> and whoever you want, to, whoever you want to, to hunt there can hunt there. And I'm sitting there thinking, God. <laughs> I couldn't even have put that down. No. Uh -uh. How, how selfish would that have sound if I put down on my, on my desire card, of my vision card? Uh, God, uh, why don't you <laughs> give me a ranch where I don't even buy it? Somebody else buys it who doesn't hunt. <laughs> 
because I don't want them hunting. <laughs> And, Lord, have somebody else feed the feeders, take care of it and all of that, and give me the keys. There you go. (laughs) I couldn't even have imagined that. No. But doesn't Ephesians 3.20 say something about that? Oh, yes. It says something to the terms of what imaginations, dreams... Uh But that's the gift giver. All I'm asking you, what God is asking you, is there anything that your security is more in, your trust Mm -hmm. is more in, your love is more in? He doesn't mind that you love them. Mm -hmm. You seek God first, man, you'll have 50-yard line tickets. I'm talking to somebody out there that doesn't want to give up sports, doesn't want to give up hunting, doesn't want to give up whatever it might be. Are you kidding God right. is the giver of every good gift and yes, every perfect yes, thing. Yes. He is light, yes. and in him is no darkness at all. Yes. Now unto Glory. him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above, above all, all that we can ask. We ask or think. I couldn't think of something like that. That's how he did it. Mm. I couldn't even have thought of that. Mm. But that's what he does. And that's the value of, of, of going. And I think about our lives and, right. and, and mom, a, a pastor, and he's connected me with sports figures and you and Olympic champions. And we can think about different things. I've, sp- I've spoken to professional teams. Right. Guys have gotten saved in locker rooms. We just had Daryl Strawberry at our church. Right. This is God doing it. Right. Right. All because in. I put it at the altar. All mm-hmm. in. All in. All in. All he's in. all in, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he's all in for you. Mm-hmm. Oh, what a planner. Oh, what a plan. Mm-hmm. You know, the great thing about God is he's not, he, he's a gift giver. Oh, he my. wants to give us these gifts. He is a giver. He wants to give us the desires of our heart. All he's saying is we don't, we don't put them before him, mm-hmm. and that's it. Yeah. That's it. He lives. Uh, you know, this is the way I look at my father. He lives to take care of me. Mm-hmm. He lives to give to me. He lives to be that provider for me. Give some but pleasure. It, great, great pleasure. Mm-hmm. Great pleasure. It's like the, the word you said, Hesed. Mm-hmm. It's mm-hmm. a great pleasure to do for us. Fulfill his covenant. Fulfill his covenant. But we just don't put anything above him. You know, I was just thinking a while ago, we talk about idol worship and Old Testament. Yeah. Uh, someone was talking recently to me about our uh, universe. And how Earth is in the sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Of all the other planets, we're in the sweet spot. Not surprised. You're talking to a baseball guy that <laughs> when you hit a home run, it's called the sweet spot. Yeah. The perfect place. Well, we're in the sweet spot. If we were um, some of uh, the other planets, we'd be burned to toast. <laughs> some of the others frozen. Oh. But Earth is in the sweet spot. Perfect. It's just perfect here for us. Uh-huh. Well, he gave us the sun. Mm-hmm. We're just warm, just right by it. Mm-hmm. The moon. The moon. Has a lot. But yet, people began to worship the sun. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. And they began to worship the moon. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And worship the stars. stars. Mm-hmm. Worshiping the creation instead of Not the rather creator. than the creator. Mm. So those were all gifts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they turn them into um, idols. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so what he doesn't want us to do. I remember one time you called me, Chip, from college. You were, oh, you were so head up because you'd been in humanities class. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And you said, we have to study the world religions in here. And they said nice things about all of them but ours. Mm. And the only thing they said about Jehovah is he's a jealous God. (laughs) I said, well, that's right, son. He certainly is. And that passage where he says he's a jealous God, he's saying there aren't any other gods. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm jealous of you. I don't want you worshiping the sun. I don't want you worshiping the moon. I don't want you to worship on all these other things. Mm -hmm. That's not good for you. Right. Mm. I'm jealous of you. Mm -hmm. I love you. Mm -hmm. I'm the one that's good for you. Yes. I'm the one that will take care of you and and, and, and be obligated to you. Mm -hmm. You get off after these things and you're going to be worshiping devils. Mm -hmm. You're going to have the devil in on it. And I'm jealous of you. So that's how he is for us. Everything is for our good. Exactly. What he tells us, it says your judgments in Psalm 119 are righteous altogether. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. When God gives a statement about something, it's for our good. Mm 
Mm-hmm. If he says this is good, mm-hmm. it's good for you. Right. If he says this is bad, right, it's bad for you. Right. You're not supposed to be coveting other men's wives. That is bad for mm-hmm. you. Mm-hmm. Fornication is bad for you. All sexual mm-hmm. sins, all these things, you're going to get led right. off by the devil. You're going to be in a mess. Right. So it's not that God is just up there trying to be a... He's light. Oh. He's light. And, right. and there's no, no darkness no. Right. at all. If you said something... I've learned this from your teaching now, <laughs> a lot of things. But if you say something like, and, and, and you're not trying to be mean or anything, or like, well, God took grandma. Mm-hmm. Or God took, you know, that little baby, or God had them mm-hmm. this happen and it was a bad thing. Then you don't understand First John. God, God is, is light, light. Mm-hmm. and there's no darkness mm-hmm. in him to do that. Mm-hmm. There's no darkness in him to do what you right. just said he could do. He's light. Mm-hmm. He's the giver of every good gift. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we're the sons of light. Mm-hmm. Right. And now, that's a revelation we need to get. Now, mm-hmm. you go all in with him, mm-hmm. you're going all in with light. Light. Right. And you're going all in with love. Not mm-hmm. not a little bit of darkness. No. 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 Because that's not all in. No. Mm-mm. That's what he wants. Mm-hmm. Well, it's it's just like uh, he wants your whole heart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. David is a man. After. After my own, own heart. heart. Right. And I what a statement. Mm-hmm. And I remember when you, when your son was born, and I was in Israel. I think I've been in Israel when lots of them were born. <laughs> yeah. And um, I called home to see what you named him. And you said... Caleb. Caleb. We thought you'd really be excited. <laughs> and I said, didn't you give him another name? <laughs> you Caleb know, you Kent. said, what's his middle name? And I said, well, Kent, after, you know, your husband and my dad and family name. <laughs> and after name. you. So you go, I'll just call him Kent. <laughs> I go, what's wrong with Caleb? And that, you said? That's a dog. Dog. I said, that means dog. dog. And I don't know that I want to call him dog. And yet. I thought, well, at least I can say, hey, who let the dogs out? Or what's up, dog? Or, you yeah. know. But yeah. So anyway, I, I went then into a bookstore. Mm-hmm. And you met the little scribe yes, later on. Yes. And I'm up there looking at books on Hebrew words. And he walks up to me and he said, I see you like Hebrew words. Well, he said, let me tell you about the Hebrew word. Um, Kalev. Kalev. He said, what about which Adam? Is, which is Caleb in Hebrew. He said, uh, what about... Um, what do you think he, it means? He said, he said Abraham... Yeah, he said, Ab- Adam got to name all the animals. No, he didn't say that first, did he? Yeah, he said, Adam got to name all the animals. And he said he named them after their uh, traits. Attributes. Yeah. Now, he said, do you know the Hebrew word for dog? Yes. Kalev. Mm-hmm. Call all and he said, what, what does it mean? I said, well, it's a dog. He said, but what does it mean? Break it apart. So I broke it apart. The first one's call, all, and the last one is live. Heart, whole heart, all heart. All in. And he said, <laughs> he said that was the dog. He's loyal to his owner. Mm-hmm. He's all heart. Of all the heart. animals in, the, in the, the animal animals. kingdom. I know when you're preaching about you'll say fluffy, the cat is just about fluffy. Yeah. But your dog will be all about you. They don't have yes. police cats. So all call no. or leading the blind. But no. what is call live? All in. All whole in. heart. All in. If he's got your heart, Chip. Yes. Whole heart. If he's got your whole heart and you haven't reserved any for you, mm-hmm. but you're gonna you're gonna be in control over your body and your soul. Mm-hmm. And you're gonna be his. That was David. That's yeah, what made that David, was David different. We'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back, guys. We're so glad that you've joined us again. Um, Today is a very special day. Uh, One of the things that I have been, well, let me just say this. Miss Billy Brim, you are a gift to me. Mm -hmm. She's a gift to me. Now, she can't go before God, but she's a gift to me. And this gift, all that she does, everything that she has done for God, we can sit here and say, wouldn't you say your mama is all in? Yes, absolutely, without a doubt. And and, in laying down her life for God and everything she does for God, we know her heart and we know what she lives her life for. And so today is an opportunity to sow seed into the kingdom of God, into Billy Brim Ministries. And I can vouch for you, Chip can vouch for you, this is great seed to sow into. Because here's one person who's laid down her life, 
who has been all in for the kingdom of God. She's never looked back. She's always gone forward. No matter what come her way, no matter what she may see, she's stayed in the game. She's all in. And so we want to give you an opportunity to bless her, to bless this ministry by partnering with Billy Brim Ministry. This is your opportunity to show you believe in this ministry. You believe on the calling that's on her life and you believe that you are all in. This gives you an opportunity to put away self and say, Father, I'm all in. I'm going to give to this ministry because this ministry has made a difference in my life. I know for me, it's made a difference in my life, in Chip's life, yes. and our children. And I believe my grandchildren, my grandchildren get here. But it will change. it's changed our lives. And so one way that we can be a blessing to that ministry is to help sow a seed. And so I ask you with all my heart, to be all in and give to this ministry. God bless you. Thanks for tuning in. We love you and we will see you next week, right? Next, next week. week.